Right, okay, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode two of Chatting Kit, season one with Billy Sharp. Um, we're going to follow the same format as episode one, which is also on Spotify. We've got a lot of questions to get through. Um, we've got teammate questions, all your normal questions, and then staff questions. So we're going to get straight into it. We spent a week doing these questions, but the first one that I'm going to have to ask has now been superseded because of what happened at the weekend, which is obviously the Bournemouth game, first game of the season. What I want to know is before, during and after. So talk me through it. Not being in the starting eleven, scoring, and then how many WhatsApps did you have <laughs> when the game finished? Um, yeah, obviously disappointed and frustrated I wasn't starting. Um, but the manager told me on the Tuesday before the, the weekend, so I had enough time to get the disappointment out my my head and um, turn back into the captain of the football club and make sure the team was ready for the weekend. And obviously, then you're just wanting to get on the pitch and get your chance to to help the lads out. And I think obviously when Ollie McBurney came on, I was thinking I wasn't going to get on. And um, obviously. We were still needing a goal, so the gaffer threw me on with, I think it was eight minutes to go. And you just wanted that one chance and did what I do best and got as close to goal as possible and managed to poke it in somehow. When it goes over the line, and obviously there's a player on the line, so you're thinking it's not offside, it's not handball, it's nothing. What is your immediate reaction when it goes in? Uh, to be honest, it was perfect setting um, late on in the game to get something out of the game. Um, at the end where the Sheffield United fans were, didn't really think about VAR at the time, even though it was ricocheting around the box and it did, it just came to me quick and instinctive, just got my left boot on it and took an ace to go in. I think it took two deflections before it got to me and then I think it took a little one as it went in, but just delighted it went over the line, get off the mark in the Premier League and obviously that's the monkey off my back for people asking the question about that. But um, no, I enjoyed it, obviously, as you can see in my celebrations. There's a, a Twitter account called Limbs, <laughs> and it's just about football limbs. When you look at the crowd, have you seen anything like that before? Um, I have. I can't think off the top of my head where uh, it's from Sheffield United fans before. Um, probably Northampton when we got promoted out of League One. Um, but yeah, as I was running over, I, I knew whereabouts my family and my wife and kids were, so that's where I tried to go over. But as I was running over, I could see people falling down the stairs and um, trying to get on the pitch. People stood on stewards. You saw it on Match of the Day. They were pulling on the stewards' heads. And I think it was just a relief from everyone, not just myself, that we'd scored and got something out of the game. And Because I think everyone was, you know, I think a lot of fans were was, was angry with what's being said about Sheffield United. They're going to go down, finish 20th, blah, blah, blah. For us to get a point with the only team out of the three that came up to get a point on that weekend was was important for us because it has got us off the mark and it's uh, set us up good for uh, two home games coming up. We'll not talk about Danny Mills. <laughs> we don't need to, I don't think. Um, how many WhatsApp messages did you have after? Um, well, I'm in mean, a few groups. There was hundreds in, in each group. Uh, I had... God knows how many WhatsApps and messages. Um, couldn't reply to them all, and no, it was great to obviously get appreciate all the text messages that I, that I got. Um, it was it was just a relief and brilliant to get off the mark. First Premiership goal. Um, been a long time coming. Love that. Um, the last time Chef and I were in the Premier League, 2006, 2007. What were you doing at that time? Um, I've got the answer, by the way, if you yeah, don't know. Well, I was playing, yeah, I can't remember who it was against. Scunthorpe United? Yeah, it was for Scunthorpe, but who was it against? Do you know? Do you know? No, I don't know that much. Not that much research, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I knew I was at Scunthorpe, yeah. Um, obviously, bad time, obviously, with what happened as well, um, the Tevez thing. And obviously, Jags has been reminded of it. He was the one who gave the end ball away and the penalty. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be back in the Premier League and hopefully this time we can stay up. Definitely. Um, the next question is, uh, how many Sheffield Wednesday fans are in this audience? Come on, don't be shy. There's a few. This next Three. one's slightly related to Sheffield Wednesday. How do you feel about your face, for a little while anyway, being on a billboard on Halifax Road? Um, have you not seen the new one? I've not seen the new one. 
further towards um, Callum Island, behind a nice glass screen now. So the Wednesday fans, they can paint it all they want. It'll just get wiped off. <laughs> As you're coming down, um, so the, your old place, coming down Rutland, yep. Rutland Road, is it? Yep. As you, you can go, obviously, well, you can't go right to Hillsborough, going left. As you're going towards Calamon, it's just on the other side of the road. I saw it yesterday, <laughs> made me made me smile. Um, no, I knew it was going to get defaced. I don't know why they put it up there. I think obviously the Sky Man was a United fan and wanted to try and get a reaction. There was actually, I think it was a Tevez one outside Bramall Lane for a while as well. So it's been a long time coming. Yeah, I remember that one as well. Um, that didn't last long. Did you want to deface that one yourself? No, I quite like Tevez, but obviously with what happened, um, I think someone else got there before me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, you're known amongst Sheffield United and opposition fans as fat lad from Sheffield, but what do you bench press? Um, we're not allowed to bench press anymore, actually. It's more scientific than that now, but okay. uh, I think I can give 110, 120. So quite strong for a fat lad. <laughs> strong indeed. Anyone else go better than that? Brad? I can't. 20? <laughs> Well, it's only a one rep max, yeah. Sixty. <laughs> Sixty. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of them. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I think I killed myself a little bit with that tag. Um, Does it was bother it? you? Not really. Um, if it did, I wouldn't have it on my Twitter as <laughs> my headline. Uh, no, I think uh, I was at Scunthorpe at the time, and I was. I wasn't fat, but I was not as in good nick as I am now. Um, and the manager used to. I don't know, I used to have a little bit of a thing with him in training. He used to call me a nuisance and when I'm not on my game, I'm just a fat lad from Sheffield. So, again, Sheffield and I had, um, I can't remember what year it was, the, the kit man did it as a joke and took, took off from there, really. We need the celebration in FIFA 20, I think. The one yeah. against Bolton. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> um, I sent you a WhatsApp about this and I keep telling people about it at work, about a Sheffield United shirt that I bought from eBay. What, have you got a, a Sheffield United shirt that stands out in your memory as your favourite? Yeah, um, the really thin red and white stripe with a black pinstripe through it. On the collar it had a little button on either side. You could button it down. Um, it's the Brian Dean. Brian Did Dean, Dean, Dean on the back? Didn't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they did it back then. You know, the, the numbers. Mm. Um, obviously they did them for the players, but don't know if you could have them as kit. Well, all my mum and dad just told me that. Couldn't afford it. Could only afford the shirt. So, But I remember that shirt and it's just about ready to fit the uh, my oldest child now. So, yeah. Quality. Maybe it'll be the next year's kit, like a yeah. throwback or something. Well, as close as it came to was the League One, but obviously the stripes was mm. thicker. Yeah. Maybe you can ask Adidas that next season. Um, my earliest memory of Sheffield United and it's, it probably is my earliest memory, but I was still relatively old, I think I was 12, was Sheffield United West Brom at Bramall Lane when everyone got sent off injured, Battle of Bramall Lane. Yeah. What, you're obviously a little bit older than me, what's your earliest memory of Sheffield United? Um, I think the Brian, Brian Dean goal, really. Um, or it always comes back to me, um, Ian Rush ended up breaking Simon Tracy's jaw don't know if anyone remembers that. Went for one goal, Trace came out, broke his jaw. You're that probably the oldest in here, Bill. So. Yeah. Am I? Really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, but Brian Dean goal as well. That's the one that stands out for me. Quality. So from back then, fast forward to now, just talk quickly about Chris Wilder. Where does he rank amongst managers that you've played under? Because I'm sure there's a lot of managers that you've played under. Where would you rank him if you had to give it a numerical value? Um, well, you say a lot of managers. I've had, I think it's nine clubs. Um, you'd probably be able to tell me if that's wrong. But I've had Adkins four times, so he's covered quite a lot of the clubs. Um, and he, and he, to be honest, he was great for me at Scunthorpe and Southampton. Uh, he had a bad time of it at Sheffield United. Um, he just don't think he quite got got it to be a manager there. And even at Reading, um, not the, not the greatest of clubs. Um, not scared to say it. Um, didn't quite happen for him there either, but um, no, the gaffer's been brilliant. Gave me the captain's armband, um, which was a huge honour for me. Uh, never been captain before and it's changed me as a player and as a person and 
I feel it's help, helped me on and off the pitch as well. So that's been quite a defining moment, taking that captaincy on and almost like that father figure role within the team. Yeah, um, I remember it now. Uh, the chairman, Kevin McCabe at the time, he rang me and he, I was just in the airport ready to go on holiday and he said, I've got some good news, bad news. I was like, okay, ask me what I wanted first. Said the bad news. He said, you, your mate Adkins has been sacked. I was like, right, okay, what's the good news? He said, um, the, the manager wants to speak to you now. And obviously it was Chris Wilder. And he said to me, he, he wanted to speak to me. I said, I can't, I'm going on holiday for a week. He <laughs> said, right, I'll let you know, you, you're going to be my captain. Um, and I, I need to see you when, when you get back for your holiday. So that was, I had a week to think about it. And obviously I was definitely going to say yes and uh, gave me time to, to think about what, what was going to be for the future. Did you know much about him before he came back to Sheffield United? Because obviously he'd been at Oxford and Northampton and been known for playing quite direct to Oxford. Were you thinking long balls over the top, not really my game? Or Yeah, I was thinking, I knew that he wanted to get the ball forward quickly, which I didn't mind. Um, obviously it gets quickly to me then. Um, but it, I knew that he'd done really well where he'd been at and I'd heard good reviews. And I think that the club at the time, well obviously in hindsight now, it's obvious it needed something like the gaffer, he knew the club and knew what needed to be done. And yeah, he's had his, he's, he's been a little bit lucky with it, how, how it worked out. Cause we lost, I think we lost two out of the first three and he was thinking, oh no, here we go again. And it just clicked and uh, we've gone on from there and he's improved us each season. A lot's said about playing style and organised chaos, overlapping centre-backs and all this and that. Do you think he could, be an England manager and implementing these never seen before tactics? Um, you say never seen before tactics. Well, I think At Atalanta play it, which is yeah. my research from this interview. So, Yeah, I have seen them play it. I think we play it differently. I just, I don't know. I think as a team, we're, we're, we're quite, ro well, we was quite raw. Just It just happened. And that's where I mean where we got a little bit lucky. We, we was playing, f I think, 4 4 2 or 4 diamond 2, and we just went to that shape and we got the win. And we went from there and we sort of developed and evolved into that shape. And um, it's credit to the lads, really. You've got, you know, Chris Bash, and we call him Snake Hips. Yeah, I don't think he knows what he's doing sometimes. <laughs> um, Jack O'Connell, um, at the start, I was saying, screaming at him, just defend your centre half, but he's. He loves it. How good is Jack O'Connell? Yeah, he, he is. Um, I've been asking him to stay at the club just one more season every time just to help us get to the Premier League. I, I, you know, if the worst games came and we got relegated, I think he'd move on to another club. He's a he's a brilliant centre-half. Um, I could see him maybe playing. This is Sheffield United shaded sunglasses a little bit, but I think he could probably play that left centre-back position for England. Um, yeah, I think he needs to develop more. Obviously, he needs to play 30-plus games in the Premiership this season, uh, which he will do if he stays fit. Um, in training every day, he's someone who you want on your team because if, if you've not got him, or Flecky, to be fair, they're the ones who usually, if you've got them on your five-a-side in training, you, you're usually winning, and they're the best two trainers at the club for me. You've nearly spoiled one of my later questions <laughs> by telling me that, but I think we'll be able to revisit it. Um, cool. Um, next question. When you get called up to the England squad this season, yep. when you've got 10 before Christmas, would you rather that game, say it's a friendly, so it can be against any country in the world, would you rather it be San Marino or Brazil? First, hopefully it's not the first international because I've just booked to go away. So. <laughs> um, Where are you going? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, San, I, San Serini then? <laughs> no. If I, if I was ever to get called up for England, that'd be... That'd be amazing. Um, I'm not too concerned if I don't. I quite like getting away in international break. Um, but you'd want it to be against Brazil, I think. Um, not one cap, ten goals. Yeah, good. <laughs> be a good ratio, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, be decent. Yeah. Maybe take take a double header, San Marino first, and then Brazil for the sentiment afterwards. That's a good answer. So I've already mentioned this question to you to give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to ask, um, and I'm going to ask it again for the sake of the audience and for the podcast. <clears throat> if Sheffield United played 3-5-2 with Billy Sharp and Brian Dean up front, how many goals would they score between them? And then the caveat was you can bring Laurent de Jaffa and Carla Sarber on if you need it. Yeah, I think we'd only bring them on if me or Dino lost a leg. 
but <laughs> um, I think between us we could get 60 goals. He can. Uh, D- don't matter what league. Um, any league. Any league. If it's the Premier League, I reckon we could get 20 each. Any other league, I think we could get 30 each. What about county senior Premier Division? <sighs> Not going dis- to disrespect it too much. Probably 32 each. <laughs> <laughs> Very precise. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to the Premier League for a second, uh, apart from the obvious, so media attention, before we obviously came onto camera, you said you had an interview with a, an American guy. Um, so media attention, kickoff changes for TV purposes. What's been the biggest difference this season compared to previous? Uh, I think things like this, the media side of it. Um, Bear in mind, you have done. We, we did pluck you from the championship. Or was it League One at the time? I don't know. When we did the video was before. It? I think that was a championship, yeah. It wasn't last year, it was the season before. But um just remember where you came from, but <laughs> <laughs> No, just the fans don't see the stuff that we have to do in and around the, the training ground. Yeah, we've got a, gr- a great lifestyle and the hours ain't as long as, you know, the normal people who go to work. But um this season has been a lot um more hours with the media side of it. We did one day uh, last week before the season started and it was a s- six hour slot I didn't actually I think I did four hours Some of the, most of the lads did three and a half but um, the likes of me Bash, the gaffer and uh, Jags did four hours just going from one station to the next stuff for FIFA uh, Fantasy Premier League um, all sorts of stuff Are you going to play FIFA now with Bramall and being in it and you having your face scanned and that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah definitely I'm at Six-year-old boy is always asking to play now. We have to play on the same team because he only comes alive when the ball is not with us. He doesn't know how to defend yet. So, um, no, it'll be, it's great. The Panini sticker book as well is coming mm. out this year. So, it'll be nice to get that for the kids as well. It's been a good year to come back into. It, it, yeah, it has. Um, like you say, a few things have changed. and Even everyone's going to remember the, the Premier League year that VAR came in as well. And obviously, we're part of that as well. Yeah, fingers crossed it goes in Sheffield United's favour. Yeah, well, I think the gaffer's already said that he thinks it will help us because um, I think when you go away to, to the bigger bigger teams, the referee sometimes bottles it a little bit, but he won't yeah. be able to do that this time and whatever decision will be the correct one because VAR will get it right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If you could play for one other club, it can be any club, who would it be? Um... I'd have to say Newcastle United, yeah. Uh, it, I had a soft spot from when I was a kid, just just because of Alan Shearer. Um, I get stickers off uh, off a few of my mates. They say I'm not even a Sheffield United fan, I'm a Newcastle fan, which obviously isn't true. Um, just when I was younger, I, I loved Alan Shearer. Um, Brian Dean was my Sheffield United hero, but footballing hero was uh, definitely Alan Shearer. He's uh, still, for me, the best striker that's played in the Premier League until someone breaks his record. Uh, I've only got two five nine to go. Um, <laughs> no, um, he's the, he is the best goal scorer. I've, some people argue he might not be the best player, but definitely the best goal scorer the, the Premier League's ever had. You're going to be keeping an eye out now, match of the day, for a comment from him about you, about your performances, or yeah, he, he was complimentary of me and match of the day just gone, uh, and sent me a, a text as well, which is nice. Um, people say don't meet your heroes, but I've met him before, and he's he's top man and. Uh, it was good to it's good to meet him. Speaking of match of the day, does it feel weird it being on BBC at ten thirty and not EFL Quest or I think it's EFL Quest is the latest one. Yeah, I was I think has it changed this year? But it was last year. Um, no, Colin Murray's qu- Colin Murray's quite good on that actually. Quite like him. Yeah, uh, he's a good guy. He's always complimentary about. Yeah, it, yeah. done a few interviews with him. He's he's um, he's good with it as well. Um, but no, it's nice to be on match of the day. Hear the theme tune. Uh, even Are you on the theme tune? Uh, From a Sheffield United perspective, is there a player that's on there? I've not checked this. I probably should have checked this. <sighs> Do you know what? That's a good question. Uh, anyone know? You're on the Sky Sports one. Yeah, I've seen the Sky Sports one, yeah. I'm on it, yeah. yeah. You are on it? I was just listening to it. I was, must have had my eyes closed at the time. <laughs> uh, no, I even, even got my <laughs> missus to watch it this, this week, which is a first. So, uh, it's been good. That's maybe the biggest thing there, not the media. Nothing like that. It's, well, it's uh, without getting moaned at. Oh, watching matter today. Yeah. <laughs> or she walks out. <laughs> um, obviously, like last season is a massive moment in your career. Is that 
your favourite moment throughout or is it getting out of League One, which is <laughs> a barren time, I think, for everyone, player and a fan alike? Uh, yeah, I think getting out of League One was obviously very important. Cause I've been in it for what, six years, six, seven years, and uh, I didn't want to drop to League One from, from where I was. I think I dropped from the Premier League to League One in like a season and a half. And uh, the only reason I went to League One is because of Sheffield United, and I thought it was the right time to go back. Um, and it's worked out brilliantly. And now we're in the Premier League, which I wouldn't have dreamt of that when, you, when, you, when I signed back. Did you feel like it was almost going to feel like cheating, dropping from Premier League to League One, or did it was actually more physical than you, what you thought it'd be? No, I enjoyed the League One season. Obviously, I scored a lot of goals and we won a lot of games and broke a lot of records as a team. So it was a memorable one and one I'll never forget. But obviously, then when you go go and do uh, Championship to Premier Leagues, another great achievement. Um, it'd have been nice to win the title, but it doesn't doesn't really matter what once you're in the Premier League as long as uh, you, you go and stay there and obviously we're hoping to be an established Premier League club which they couldn't do last time Definitely um, You've been a pro for 15 years I believe is that correct? 16 I think but you might be right Sack the copywriter I think um, my dad told me 16 oh this might be my 16th so right. yeah, you get away with it I'll take that no one's getting sacked today <laughs> then. How many have you got left? Uh, I've got this and next un contract, um, which will take me to 35. You probably can't believe that, but um, you're not a day over 29. I'll take that. Um, but I, I feel great, and if I can do well this season, then I'll be knocking on the gaffer's door for an extension. But no, I've got two years, which is great for me, and obviously the family so security is there, and I can concentrate on obviously trying to be a prof uh, Premier League professional footballer, hopefully for two more years, and then I'll come and see, see what happens after that. Speaking of after that, are you going to be banging at-tricks in Sheffield over 35 league when you finish? I think that's the plan, yeah. Um, but at the minute, I'm, I don't think I'm just going to quit the, the Premier League at 35. Hopefully I can go on. But yeah, if, that, if it was a, you know, dropping down or playing with my mates, I think, I think I'd play with my mates, yeah. They've been been asking about it we've trained together and uh, some of them are still really good players they lost a bit of timber but um, maybe I'll catch them up with the timber when I finished do you think you would be, there, be that player that I think there's a couple of players that spring to mind when they finish and they put a lot of weight on I just saw Mark Overmars recently and he's huge is that you or are you going to be carrying on not doing your bench pressing but <laughs> in the gym and that kind of stuff yeah I think I'm going to try and keep in good knit yeah um not sure how I'll go, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely want to. Have, whenever I finish, I definitely want to give one season with my mates in the over 35s. I think it'll be a right laugh, and uh, they're looking forward to it as well. So I'm not sure how I'd feel if I were 40 yard, been on the been on the booze the night before, and then see you up front if I'm playing centre back. I don't know how I'd feel about that. I think they just want to kick me. Um, I don't know. Like, like I said, I've said it, but I do, I do see myself doing it, and. I have told the lads that, so I can't really let them down now. So I think I'll uh, have to go, have to go with it. And you played in a friendly recently, which quick kit locker plug we did do the kit for, which I think went down all right. Yeah, um, great quality, lads. Thanks, mate. He didn't get paid to say that. Fitted right? all the lads apart from one of them. Uh, one of them was bursting out of it, but because it's decent stretching material, he got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> How many goals did you score in that game, and what did it finish? I think I sc yeah, I scored two. I think one in each half. Um, had the opportunity to get the hat trick, but f thought it was a bit disrespectful if I did that. And trying to play West in and uh, sorry, uh, a lad called Spooner in because he'd not scored on the night and he was getting a lot of stick from the lads. But we couldn't get him a goal. And uh, I think it, I think it was like nine nil or something like that. So the the lads were happy with a clean sheet as well. I take Keep it. He didn't even get a skip monkey. Good, it's a good job. Cause it's, that <laughs> don't come Doesn't out. wash well. <laughs> Uh, before we get into some more quick fire questions, um, to quickly touch on Harry Maguire, were you around Sheffield United when Harry Maguire was there, and did you ever think he'd be where he is now, eighty million pounds? I wasn't at the club, no. Um, but Neil Collins, who played alongside him, someone who I still speak to now, and obviously I know H as well. And um, when I see him, I speak to him. 
Um, Neil Collins said he was, he was one of the best centre halves he played alongside, and he did say that about <laughs> three, four seasons ago. So he's not just jumping on the bandwagon. Um, but I think he's improved a, a lot. Um, he still does the same things what he did at Sheffield United, but he just does them a lot better. And he's since um, since Hull, where I think he had the odd mistake in him throughout the season. I think he's cut them out and. People say quite a lot of money, but this day and age, it's it's what it is. And I think Leicester was in a strong position. That's why they could they could charge that that much. People compare him to Van Dijk, but um, you know I think he's if you, them two are the best in in the division. You put yeah. them two together, and I don't think anyone's getting past them. Maybe a good fantasy football pairing. I think I've got them both in. Yeah, definitely. We're going to talk about fantasy football in a sec, so let's not let's not spoil it too much. Um, if Harry Maguire's worth 80 million, what are you worth? This is not even written down, I just thought that off the top of my head. Well, he's playing in the Premier League, I'm playing in the Premier League. He's a defender, I'm a striker. Ah, so I'm still 8 million, definitely. 8 mil? Well, probably more for, for people who are getting signed for these days. We'll round it up to 10 then, just so it's uh, an I extra. I say 28, but oh, anyway, sorry. 10 will do. <laughs> Uh, one more before we get into teammate questions. Um, you run Sharpshooters, which is at Gold Sheffield. Um, coaching, I'm not sure how much there's a fly there. <laughs> coaching you do um, personally, but in the future, do you do you see yourself as a potential manager? Just before we answer that, just another plug. Um, they're asking me for more kit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sure I'll we, can sort something. we can sort um, something out. I've done my... UEFA B, so um, I just got a few bits of paperwork to do on that to hopefully pass that. And um, I'd like to manage Sheffield United one day. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think you were forty to one for the <laughs> Doncaster job. Yeah, I seen that. A couple yeah. of seasons ago. Um, I think it was a bit too soon. Um, good odds though. Uh, I don't know. I've <laughs> would I? Would I not? I don't know. Maybe if it got. If the chance was there, I'd give it a go, yeah. But I'm not too sure. Company and a like, player manager. Player manager Sheffield United or Sheffield FC? <laughs> um, I think I'd just be manager, definitely. I don't think you can be both these days. I don't I think, think you, get, you can. Um, just, I think you need to either be one or the other. I think you can't concentrate on the one if you're doing the other. Yeah, definitely. So, teammate questions. And you've already alluded to Jack O'Connell and John Fleck a little bit. Who do you dread coming up against most in training? Yeah, definitely Jack O'Connell. Um, he's as aggressive and powerful as he is in training as a game. Even when the gaffer says it's a Friday, you know, watch your tackles. First minute, Jack O'Connell, bang. <laughs> um, no, he's he's um, he is just like a brick wall. He's even when he's on the wrong end of a tackle, he's he just gets up, rubs whatever it is, and gets on with it. He's uh, He's a proper centre half, if you like. Call it. Is the current Sheffield United dressing room, or maybe even League One or a Championship Sheffield United dressing room, is that the best dressing room that you've been in in your career? Uh, yeah, the dressing room's changed a lot this season. We've only had a couple of weeks with each other, with obviously ten new signings. I think it is. Um, that's my job as captain. Uh, Gaffer controls the group. I control the dressing room and. Uh, feel like I've done a decent job with it over the years. Uh, we've had to cut it down, I mean, too old school, if you like, if you know what I mean. I um, kind of know what you mean. This season, we've not had as many uh, player get-togethers, if, if you're getting my drift. Um, I'm getting your drift. But, um, no, it's something that we've has been great for us over, over the years. Uh, it, it's, it is a lot easier when you're winning games, which we've done a lot of. Um, but I think it all starts from the dressing room. If, if the dressing room's not right, then you know you're not gonna do well on the pitch. Is there any barbecues at the Sharp household as captain? I think Alex Scott said this the, when she was Arsenal, ladies captain. She was always hosting a barbecue for all the players. Is that something you've done yet? Bit, bit too posh for us that. Um, you be, don't you? Li you live in quite a posh area, Sheffield. So. Yeah, I know, but I'm from originally from Pittsmore, so. Keep grounded. Um, we just tend <laughs> no barbecues. <laughs> tend to go on Ecky Road and go in uh, weather starting weather spoons and <laughs> work his way up. <laughs> Got to remember your roots. Got to remember your roots. Um, who's always late for the team bus? 
Um, don't think you're going to be surprised with this answer. This year it's Ravel Morrison. He's uh, the first thing he likes getting fined. <laughs> um, you say to him, Raf, it's a fine, and he goes, not bothered. <laughs> but I'm sure um, he'll, uh, he'll click on soon that he's losing a lot of money. So. Yeah, definitely. Who, speaking of Ravel Morrison, I, there's plenty of clips from him on YouTube and that kind of stuff. So. When you when there's a YouTube compilation, it's always top corners, nutmegs, that kind of stuff. I'm sure you'd look like Alan Shearer if there's one of you. Who's always putting the ball in the top corner in training? Um, well, Rav's all, when we do finishing, Rav's always saying, Sharpie, come on, tenner, who scores most? So, and he hasn't beat me yet, we've done it twice, so I've got <laughs> 20 quid off him. Um, <laughs> he is one of them people, it's either top corner or top of the stand. Um, I tend to just, Put it in the top corner, so take his money. <laughs> Brad knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we could put a link to that video <laughs> in this somewhere. Um, I think I kind of already know the answer to this one. Why Basically, give me then f- for the fans, <laughs> for the podcast, for the chatting kit podcast. Who's the last man standing uh, in a fitness test? <sighs> Definitely not John Flag. <laughs> Uh, who was it? Oh, Chris Basham. Yeah. yeah, don't even know why it took so long. Yeah, he's he's like the steam train, like he does. Um, I've seen a, I've seen numerous videos on Twitter of the steam yeah, train. Yeah, he's he's just relentless. Yeah, the gaffer says run faster, he runs faster, run longer, he runs longer. He just just keeps going. Um, I think he was half a lap ahead of everyone with this running challenge what we had in in Portugal. I think you've already answered this next one, Mama. Again, I'm gonna ask it anyway. First man dropping in a fitness test. Yeah. Oh, actually, it wasn't John Fleck this time. We had a trialist, uh, Joel Lynch. <coughs> Probably shouldn't have dug him out. Um, Sorry, Joel. <laughs> was doing uh, another fitness challenge, and uh, halfway around it, he, he was shouting for the physio. <laughs> what hell? <laughs> yeah, he's gone. So he dropped out before Flecky, who, who was buzzing. Uh, but yeah, it's usually Flecky. But somehow, he in games, he gets through 90 minutes and still surges past people, and yeah. he, he never looks tired. Yeah, it almost like a cheat code in League One, watching him do that. Yeah, I, I just don't think he likes running without a ball. Definitely doesn't. Who's always singing? Oh, who is it? Yeah, the, the new lad, uh, Moose, we call him. Uh, Moose at the new signing. What is it like, just to, not to interrupt you, but that was the, obviously the first player that wasn't British for, a, like, I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me how long it is, but it's a while. So what was that like? Was it, did it feel make it feel different or...? Yeah, I do know actually who it was. Um, but the Belgian kid, midfielder. I played with him. Florent Cavellier. There you go. I'm such a one. great Sheffield United fan. Um, I think it was him, yeah. Um, no, we had to break that trend at some point. Um, There's only so many British players you can play. Yeah, well, I'm the only English striker at the club now as well. So I saw that on the programme and where the flags come up, I'm the only one. So. Where's, Mc, where's McBurney from though? Is he not yeah, he's born from, in England? He's from, from Bradford. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he gets a bit of stick about that, but um, no, he's, he's Scottish apparently. McBurney, yeah. yeah. It's in the name, I guess. I think so, yeah. Um, I saw a, a stat, and uh, don't ask me why I was looking at this. It was a, a compilation of all the Instagram followers of each team, and Sheffield United, lo and behold, were bottom, and Dean Anderson made up about half of the followers of Sheffield United combined is he the one that's always on Instagram or is there others that are trying to overtake him or what you mean he's got the most followers yeah that's only because mine's private <laughs> it is I know I know <laughs> no, he's, got, Brad, he Brad does that you're following like, he way. tries to get followers yeah he has calmed down a little bit this year um, but yeah he's he loves all the media side the Instagram and your Snapchats and but don't know how he's got time for it Cool. Uh, the next section is probably the one that I'm looking forward to the most because these questions are probably a sit outside a normal media interview. And the, the title of the section is called Are You Normal? All right. So first one is, what supermarket chain do you shop at? Uh, locally, Tesco Express or the co-op. But my missus does the online shopping from Sainsbury's. I thought, I thought it was going to be a card or a waitress, personally. Nah, but we do get stuff from Aldi as well, which is really good. So we're a bit, bit of all-rounder. 
Lucy wrote that question and she's so happy that you shop at Alda. She's behind the camera. <laughs> she's buzzing. Well, I'll, I'll, where are Orchard Road, there's an Aldi around it, it's the same bit, so... So now you've, co- you've caused a, a pile-up in Isle of Free now, <laughs> waiting for Billy Sharp to come into... I just like the middle bit, where all the offer and offers, there's loads of random stuff in there. <laughs> Is it going there? There's some pretty random stuff. No, What's the barbecue random thing? though? <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you used public transport? Um. We got a private plane to Bournemouth, does that count? <laughs> no, that doesn't count. <laughs> wow. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, a tr- uh, yeah, so train, like a, train, fir- a first bus. Oh, first bus, uh, probably about a year ago. Did the bus and then the tram with the kids. Something to do. They've never been. We're not going to tell. We're not going to say which bus number because we don't need to pile up on oh, the fifty-two or whatever it is. Eighty-two, I think it is. Through the door, is it? I'm not sure. I don't. <laughs> I live in where you grew up, so I don't know though. That well. Um, do you own a Louis Vuitton wash bag? I don't. Mulberry. Class- classy. <laughs> Have you ever flown on Ryanair? Yep. When uh, was the last time? To Portugal, golfing in the summer. So you are quite normal then? Yeah, very normal. Went Jet 2 to Turkey as well. You're going to cause a pile up on Jet 2s and Ryanair now. Jet 2, I was impressed with Jet 2 actually. <laughs> New plane, good plane. Good plug again. Yeah. Maybe the fifth <laughs> one. <laughs> How many toilets do you have in your house? This is worrying me that you're thinking about it this much. Four, I think. <laughs> one, one downstairs. Family bathroom, one suite. Four. It's it's sol- solid number. If you live in door, maybe. How many have you got? One. One? Outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even got an outhouse. <laughs> uh, what does Billy Sharp watch on TV? Do you know what? I don't really watch TV. It's, I've got two kids. I'll go home from here. They'll have me in the garden for an hour. Then it's tea time. Then it's bath time, bedtime. And then literally, it's eight o'clock. I get in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to sleep. No, yeah. It's a good job this is a podcast because your eyes said a, a thousand. No, I, thousand all, that's just what I mean. The, the lads at training, they're always like, oh, you watched this last night. Did you watch that? No, I was doing this. I was doing that. Like, Kieran Freeman's got two girls and he doesn't drive. He doesn't have a license? Doesn't, uh, no, he just, yeah. Doesn't have a license, doesn't drive. And Does he get the public transport to training? No, or he has to pick him up. Yeah, no, I don't, but he's got a car school which picks him up every morning but yeah he's coming in oh I was on cod last night till three in the morning I'm like <laughs> wow why <laughs> like I don't know just my missus likes to watch the series and stuff but I don't know just don't get the time really just whenever I do watch TV it's football or other sport football man <laughs> gotta be cool so that was the last of the all your normal questions I'm sure people are going to be listening to this are probably thinking I wish you'd asked pretty weird aren't I really <laughs> X or Y I mean you Quite normal. Yeah. Jet two and, and that. Um, for people that are on this podcast listening, they're obviously not gonna know. Maybe they know by now that we've got an audience. And I sent a message out to all the staff at Kit Locker. What would you ask Billy Sharp if you had an opportunity to? So this, these are what they are. Rather than asking people in the audience, I've already written them down for okay. the sake of the podcast. And again, for the sake of the podcast, Brad Danks works at Kit Locker and he's a hairdresser. The first question from the staff, would you let Brad Danks cut your hair? Definitely. (laughs) For the podcast, Brad Danks said he'd be too nervous. (sighs) He's not filling me with confidence with that. Are you qualified hairdresser? Mecky Road, 284 hair. That's another plug. (laughs) Let's not shout those guys out. Kit Locker cuts. There you go. Series three, cut my hair if you want. <laughs> He'd be too nervous. <laughs> to be honest, there's a, there's, there's a story behind cutting hair at the minute. There's, we go around to George Baldock's. This is, you might not think this is normal. We get an hairdresser to come round. He cuts, I think there's six of us who get it cut at the minute. Um, we literally turn up. Do you like sit, go- gossip and paint each other's nails when you're out? Nah, 
to be fair, bless him, his missus sits there in the corner, just all lads take the top off, sit down. Jaws told us what time to come. Literally sit down, t- take stuff out of his fridge, <laughs> get your hair cut, laugh at the hair on the floor, say thanks, George, thanks to the air, so walk out. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm liking it at a minute. I s- Some money in that as well, Brett. I think he's making more than anyone in this room by the haircuts. He <laughs> work, so. He's doing all right. He's doing all right. Um, a slightly more serious question. This I don't know. Let's do it this season. So out of the teams in the Premier League, what team do you want to play against the most? Um, I think the obvious ones are, well, for me, Anfield, never played there. Chelsea away, never played there. Spurs and West Ham, new stadiums. Um, I think two of the best stadiums in the Premier League at the minute. Um, but again, I love playing at St James's Park. Great um, stadium. Away fans are always miles away in, in the skies. And uh, Southampton away on last day of the season. That'll be nice to go back to my old club. Um, I think we've got them soon at home, actually. So now this every game's a brilliant game. But um, you're quite well thought of at Southampton. So do you expect a little clap pre-kickoff when you're starting? I guess it depends if whoever wins stays up. They might not get clapped. Yeah. But. No, I'm playing for Sheffield United, um, so I'll be trying to score against Southampton. And if I get a good ovation, then brilliant. I'll, uh, I'm sure that that will change after ten minutes, or what have you, <laughs> <laughs> which has happened before. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Well, not name names on clubs. I mean, you can if you want. <laughs> uh, there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I, I, another serious question, which I thought was a really good one to add in. Um, and maybe this is might be aimed at like younger younger people that are listening or players. What's the difference between players that make it and don't make it, in your opinion? Um, it's, I think it's discipline on on the pitch, as in every single day matters. I think I've seen and trained with a lot of players that you think, oh, he's a good player, and then the next two days, he's not a good player. Um, and that's why I, I appreciate Jack O'Connell and John Fleck because they every single day it means something to them and they try. People say they try the best every day, but it doesn't happen. Um, and I'm, that's for me as a captain what I've learned. If you can get nine out of eleven players who are doing it day in day out on the training pitch, then you're going to be winning a lot of games. Um, and off the pitch, I think it's obvious. Um, keeping yourself in good nick with. What you don't eat and what you don't no drink. No chicken dippers. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, f- I, s- I still eat them. The kids leave leave them lying around. I'm, I take them off them. Uh, no, <laughs> just just yeah, just the discipline o- off the pitch, the distractions with what your mates are maybe doing, and you see it. You see talented players who don't come through and make it because they can't handle all the off off the field side of it. We, when we filmed, I'm sure we'll have alluded to this a little bit in this podcast about the video that we filmed together, 2017, I think it was. We, I tried to ask you a question around your perfect five-a-side yeah. team, and on the spot it's quite difficult. But I'm asking something quite similar again now. So, best player you played with and best player you played against. Uh. I got asked this the other day and I get a different answer to what I did you last time. Um, it's easy to say Vincent Company, but I only played against him for like 20 minutes. But yeah, he's... I think that still counts though. Brad was pretty tough in the second part of the show we had, but... He's a, he's a, <laughs> no, he's a, he's a steady right back. Yeah, you can say, I can say Vincent Company for the, for the, for the name, but... Um, when I was younger, I played against Sylvan Distin and Richard Dunn. They was big, angry Irishman. Yeah, man. but everyone thought you were slow, and he was he was quality, really good pairing. Uh, them two was tough. Um, was that in training? Man, man City then. Yeah, Man City. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in training, yeah, um, the likes of Chris Morgan, who used to give me a few lessons in training, just off the ball, used to just scrape down the <laughs> Achilles and. Basically, you can't say what he used to say, but... What was your reaction to something like that? Do you stand back up to Chris Morgan or do you just say, cheers, Chris? No, you just go into a little shell and <laughs> <laughs> try and run away from him. Uh, no, he was the captain of the club back then. I think stuff like that's why I'm here now. Um, 
yeah, Jack O'Connell reminds me just of him because he does exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Penultimate question then. Um, if you get battered in the press for a poor performance or the team does, does that annoy you or do you just not even read it or does it give you motivation to... I don't go chasing, read, trying to read things. Um, you know, I've got family, I've got friends who might say, oh, did you see this? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, I know I've had quite a... Um, I don't know, a few people, in pre you've already mentioned one. Um, but I really, honestly, I don't really care. Um, I know I'm good enough to play in the Premier League and score goals there. I'm not one of these players, well, you all know, sitting here today, I'm, I don't run, do tricks, go past people. You know, I just rely on my teammates who are good players to put the ball in, in areas where I find myself on the end of, just like Saturday. Um, and I keep saying it, I just, it is, you need to get as centrally and as close to goal as possible without being offside. And the ball usually get, gets to that point and I'm, I've been pretty good in my career at doing that, so I'm just going to try and keep doing it. There you have it then. That's the secret sauce to scoring <laughs> hundreds of goals. Part of it, yeah. <laughs> Bog line. But, but <laughs> yeah, the, the media side of it is something which I think will be highlighted a lot more this season because it's the Premier League. and um, Which is why I think there's been a lot of opinions around where yeah. Sheffield United are finishing. Which it, a lot of it's justified because it's an unproven young team. A lot of players have come up through League One. So I guess it's kind of, well, we'll just prove them wrong then yeah definitely if you know I've seen one article where he's only where I've had it before he's only good enough for League One which that winds me up a little bit because over half my goals my career goals have come in the championship so um, that's, a, that's a myth if you like if he'd have said he's not good enough for the Premier League he's never scored he's only played twice three times now um, I'd have took that on a chain that's fair enough you know he's, he's just making his opinion if everyone's the same It'd be boring anyway, so yeah. It's just yeah, that he he'd not really done his research, if you like, or I think he just said it for you know the reaction really. Yeah, but yeah, we're quite happy personally and as a as a club. If we get written off by everyone and we get relegated, then no one will be surprised. But the pressure's off us, and yeah, exactly. We can uh, just keep w concentrating on ourselves. Cool. Last question, and we've kind of touched on it before. Uh, fantasy football and I think for a lot of Sheffield United fans in this audience and even myself the novelty of having a Sheffield United player on fantasy football means you have to have them in doesn't matter how many points they get um, or the performance throughout a season you've just got to put them in because it's a Sheffield United uh, player do you play it and the second part of the question is do you look at the percentage of people that have picked you for their team yeah, uh, the last part, I was 0.9%, I think, being picked. I'm now 1.1 1. 1 now, oh, so well, I'm flying. Only going one way. <laughs> no, um, I actually had myself in the starting 11 because I thought it'd be a little bit cheaper, but I had me in just for novelty, like you said. All my mates had me in. And then they asked me, obviously, on the... I knew I was not playing before the Friday, but they all asked me on the Friday, are you playing? I was like, no. I gave them, like, 10 minutes before the deadline. The, how many Every single one of them <laughs> took me out. Even myself. The only <laughs> one who kept kept me in was my brother. That's just because he's way off it with like timings and yeah. he just got lucky really. You think he'd have probably took me out. And then ended up getting eight points, I think. So yeah. more Love than that. Guerrero. So that's who That's can be the claim to the season's well, finished claims, now. Yeah. Ended now. Claim to fame. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've got uh Callum Robinson and Dean Anderson. So the goal the Bournemouth goal was a bit of a stinker. So you chose, chose Robbo over me, right? Yeah. yeah. No, Cheers. you're in there, Bill. <laughs> you're in there. Well, that's it anyway, uh, question wise. So, in part one, we we kind of like tried to flip this a little bit more to justify why we're doing a podcast. And we got Mike, our uh, managing director, to ask the podcast a question. I don't know if you've got any questions for the podcast or myself or Kit Locker. Um, no, I think it's quite good that they've get to experience things like this. Um, yeah. I think if you asked, if we was to advertise this, and I think there'd be a lot of kids sat here and... I think Mick Foley was charging a couple <laughs> of times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, it's been cool. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's nice to know that so many of you are interested in what I've got to say. Um, Even Sheffield Wednesday fans. 
yeah, exactly. Um, thought they might have heckled me a little bit more than they have done, but no. Um, nice place you've got now. It's about time you got them somewhere bigger, isn't it? Well, not you, but oh. one day. <laughs> I, I get out of pits. You seem to all, seem to have a good team spirit, like like I've been talking about. You seem to all enjoy working here, and it's good to see. Has anyone else got any questions? What they can think of now? If anyone's got any questions, I can just repeat them for the podcast's sake. Messi or Ronaldo for the oh, podcast? Good question. Completely different players. I'll go Messi. Best atmosphere you've played at? For the podcast. Best atmosphere you've played at? Um, yeah, it's a good one. I don't know, like, Saturday wasn't the biggest atmosphere. It depends what, as moments go, like, that occasion. was... Occasion. Yeah, the occasion was, it couldn't have been any, I couldn't have written it any better, you know. Saturday was amazing. Still, I've w looked and watched it back, I don't know, numerous times, and still get that same feeling, the same buzz as when I scored it. Um, fo that's the thing about football for me. The fans make it... Um, better the atmosphere, the, I think the better the game is for me. Um, but it played in a lot of great atmospheres, I'm sure. I'm going to play in some of the better, better ones this year. Um, hopefully our first game on Sunday is going to, going to be a sellout as well. Yeah, fingers crossed for a few more moments like Saturday, I think. We'll end it there. And if there's any more questions, we can do it off air. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone that's come, you, Bill, yourself, and everyone that's listened to this. Um, so this is episode two. Episode three will be slightly different, so that's going to be with a YouTube football content creator, um, and that'll finish off season one. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.